How's it going? How's it going, Brett? Hey, can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear all me all right? right? Yeah. How are Pleasure you, to meet you. Pleasure. Yeah. Nice. Uh, nice to meet you as well. I'm excited. This should be great. Yeah. Just getting a little set up here. Chris is going to jump on in a second. We're going to. He's going to be at his uh, bar. I'm going to be at my bar. So we're going to kind of be tag team in this. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. Have you guys uh, opened back up for in person yet? Yeah. How's yeah, that going? We'll... Go ahead. I was just asking, how's that going? I know it's, you know, um, journey it's, okay. it's, it's, you know, I mean, it's good to be open. We, we actually never close. We just did like takeout and dining, you know, sure. Uh, delivery but it's good to have the patio open it's good to you know feel the energy get the people in there the weather's been amazing you know it's um yep um so you know it's good i mean people people are i mean we had a great weekend i think people are definitely anxious to get out there so we, oh 100 percent yeah we're, man, I mean, we're really, people really are, hoping for the in-person events to come yeah. back when the time is oh safe God. and socially acceptable to do so yeah exactly go ahead we're not on yet my wife's hesitating walking by. Oh yeah, no, no, we're, it's. I got like a mini WeWork here. It's it's all good. It's, it's virtual <laughs> land. Exactly. I'll be right back, Nick. Yeah, no rush. How's it going, Chris? How you doing? 
Not too bad. It's going well. It's going well. How are you doing? Not too bad. You have a much more stocked bar than I do at the moment. Pretty <laughs> envious. Ready to go. Hey, Tay. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Good. Nice to meet you, Nick. Likewise. Got the whole gang here. Yes, this is the gang right here. <laughs> Hold on. Let me see if I can get a better... Oh, yeah. That's a good angle. And are you still able to record this? Oops. Yeah, so it should be, uh, you should see a little red light by my Oh, name. I do see it, whoops. It's going to the cloud. <laughs> I can Great. send you a link afterwards, so. <laughs> Thank you. Content is king. Yes, for sure. I wasn't sure if we were supposed to save these chips. I can't, I got a little uh, carried away with myself. <laughs> Might only have crumbs left. <laughs> Once you eat one, you can't stop eating them. Yeah, they're, is it is the crack that you sprinkled on it the same? Is this the is it the Pez powder? That's what it is. Yup. Makes makes a lot of sense. I guess I need to open this baby up. What's up, homies? Hi. Uh, let me go grab. Now I gotta set up. I was wondering why no one was responding to me. There's this thing called unmute at the bottom of the screen. I guess I, I should probably hear that. Cla classic. Right? I'm like, dude, they don't want to hear me at all. Like, this is, okay, fine, whatever. <laughs> Levi. Yeah, we bring, we bring the crack to you in three, three different flavors of crack. We got black crack, we got the original, and we got green. <laughs> So, I love that. What's what's the the flavor differences in the yeah. uh, the black and green? So, so uh, the black is chipotle and lime, and uh, so it's like smoky and spicy. It's, I don't know if you can see that, but it's uh it's got like kind of mid range on the on the spice meter, and then green is like love that super like uh, it's not like, crazy spicy, but it's uh. Okay. It's a bit more like bright and herbal and it's just on the door now. Yeah, so, and then the originals are kind of our, the ones we started off with our chips and, and, and you know, we put that on, we blacken things on there and rimming stuff and. Makes sense. Eat it like that and, you know, so. Mom, uh... so yeah. Hey, Trees. Hey, Chavin. Hey there, Shane. Hi, hey, friends. Guys. Hey, friends. Ryan looks like he's uh, Lunch, I see you guys. Christmas presents over there. Ryan, you were supposed to open that yesterday to refrigerate everything. <laughs> Whoops. Oops. Well, looks like uh, it's been cold enough down here. I'm downstairs in our apartment. <laughs> Nothing a little ice and a shaker can't fix. Yeah, right. I gave you a shaker. Just throw some ice in that bad boy. Yeah, true that. Very true. Easy. Sorry, right, it was late, guys. I was watching Family Feud. I think there's a five-minute buffer on any virtual Zoom. You're watching what? Family Feud. Oh, yeah, that's uh, acceptable fair. excuse, I suppose. 
<laughs> Steve Harvey, man, he's funny. <laughs> so does the chamoy go on the rim of your glass? Yes. Yeah, so you kind of like want to put it like on a plate like that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you, don't I just... pour, you don't need to pour out too much, although it's like, I mean, you can eat it on like so many different things. I'll just like, you know, dip fruit in there or my finger. You, you can also dip, you can also dip your glass inside of that deli cup. I just walked into the kitchen and Fadi had just poured like everything in a glass. <laughs> well, you guys have, oh, that's funny. <laughs> Not surprising. Well, about 75% of that makes the chamoy is tamarind paste. So you're gonna have a tamarind margarita now. Nice. Uh, kind of sounds good. I love tamarind. Me too. Wait, I thought you were just supposed to dip it. Dip you the are. Chris, Chris brought up a good point. You could just leave it in the deli cup that you guys got it in and you can just, like, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's how I did it. Cool. You are ice. I'm not doing it yet, right? We're being instructed on how to do this. We're, we're going to give you step-by-step -step instruction because it's really easy to go the, the wrong way on this, you know? Connor already went the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> I need like a couple plates, right? Are there any extra stuff I should grab? I mean, well, you, you, like you, well, you don't need I a got plate. the, the Pez powder like this. If you guys, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And whatever you do, whatever Pez powder you have left over, don't throw it away, you guys. You can. I, this plate has been sitting here for like six months. Yeah. All right. So. All right. Nice. Anyway, are we? Um, I see. think we're uh, all here. I briefly dropped because I think my roommate's streaming TikTok in the background, but I think we're good now. Classic. Well, I'll, I'll, I guess I'll kick it off, you guys. Um, Perfect. Thanks, Brett. So nice to to be here with you guys. And man, one of these days, you guys are going to be on the patio at Pez having a, a, a cocktail in person, flesh to flesh, and we'll be we'll be hanging out. So, I any of you guys ever been to Pez Cantina? Uh, yeah. My, my wife says she used to go there every week for at work when people actually went into work. But oh, really? Yeah. Wait, who's talking? Connor. 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 Oh, hey, Connor. Yeah, my wife. My wife used to go to you guys oh, every, sweet. every week at work. What, does she work like in the financial district, or she, she's at Shepherd Mullen downtown? Ah, good old oh, Shepherd yeah. Mullen. I like them. Yes. So, Mullen. yeah. So we, you know, we've got we just celebrated our six year anniversary just in time for a pandemic. It's been fun, <laughs> um, but uh, you know, it's not stopping us. We we just kind of been doing a lot of this stuff now, and you know, so Chris is on the screen. Chris M. He's my partner. Um, and bar manager and homie and you know we kind of rock and roll a lot of things together you know um and then taylor she's the other pez cantina young lady there she's uh my right hand lady our right hand lady and she's she's just uh gosh i don't know what i would do without her now i'm like ah you know the people you meet you didn't know them uh, a year ago and now i can't i can't quit her <laughs> <laughs> so um but uh, so yeah, uh, super stoked to be with you guys. Um, I, you know, what, Chris is gonna lead the, the, the cocktail making session here. Um, I'm gonna kind of just maybe be like his little co-host and throw a little, <laughs> little nuts and wrenches in there and kind of just talk a little bit of crap while we go. Um, I got some, actually some mezcal here too. So I think I'm gonna throw a little mezcal uh, margarita. I don't know, this is a, a really good one called Havali. It's a great varietal. It's from uh, Los Hobbies, our friends from Oaxaca. Um, so just to kind of mix it up a little bit, but um, you know, please, you guys, this, you know, this should, this should be really fun and interactive. If you guys have any questions at all, please just throw it out there. Um, but uh, you know, let's, let's get to it. Awesome. Yeah, I think I think we should start with the shot. We should all take a virtual shot with each other. Oh, I like that. Does anyone have any tequila at the house? Yes, <laughs> we do. Do we have tequila? Amanda is so <laughs> excited right now. She's like, I'm definitely taking a shot. <laughs> I'm going to drink some mezcal. Oh, that's a good idea. Right. So I know Brett kind of touched on the mezcal. My, my margarita will be with mezcal as well. I, might, I love mezcal and tequila, but if I had to choose one, mezcal all day. 
Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. Yeah, so does, it, does everybody know, like, All right, I, so, um, I feel like it's a, people sometimes are afraid to ask, like, the difference between tequila and mezcal? Tequilas are mezcals, but mezcals aren't tequilas. <laughs> tequilas are. <laughs> um, there you I go. Would say more like mezcals are tequila, but tequilas right. are not mezcals. That's right. Yeah. Um, I mean, Chris is shaking his head. He's like, dude, you're so full of it. Uh, <laughs> no, you want to tell, tell them the difference, Chris? Chris loves the story here. I mean, there's there's a there's a lot of similarities and differences, but um, the main difference is the agaves. Uh, you know, your tequilas are used. Uh, they use the blue Weber agave, and your mezcals. They, they use a wide range of them. And then the distillation process. Essentially, they smoke the agaves, which kind of gives the mezcal its smokiness. And um, you know, they don't do that to the tequila. So that's like the main difference you could say is the agaves and the smokiness to non-smokiness. But tequila is a mezcal. So you, is the smoky correct. flavor, is it added after the fact or is it part of the distillation process? It, it's actually part of the distillation. So um, imagine just digging a big hole in the ground and then throwing the agaves into it and then they cover it up and it's smoked in there for like hours until they soften up. Oh, and that's so. their process of like softening up the agaves for the distillation process. Yeah, we went we went down there uh, to you know Los Javis, these guys, and they walked us through the whole process. So they had like a massive hole in the ground, and they were uh, basically roasting all the pinas they call them with um, like eighty percent they call encino wood, uh, I guess it's oak, and then twenty percent mesquite, mm -hmm. and literally they 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 like I mean the the hole is probably I'm I'm going to show you a picture of it. The hole is it's probably like. 30 feet in diameter, if not more, and about 12 to 15 feet deep. And they throw them all in there with all that wood. And then they cover with like a tarp and they let it go slow for, you know, I don't know. I think it's like at least a day. For, yeah, at least 18 hours. Um, and then, you know, you can also throw fruits into that process or, you know, there's pechuga, which is a type of, of um, mezcal where they roast the turkey breast in the process as well. So there's a lot of different ways to change the, the, uh, uh, mezcal and there's a lot of different characteristics and that's what makes it so fun after after it comes out of the uh the ground that's me and and javi uh and a, a donkey's actually pulling that thing it's called a tahona <laughs> and it crushes all those roasted uh pinas and and then they throw it into a big vat and it just it just ferments for about a week it's amazing the smell of like that it's just incredible and just yeah, you know, right now there's it's. It, I think it's the glory days of mezcal because right now you really can't find a bad mezcal. And, and yeah, I just, to give you, just to give you an idea how big these are, those are my sons next to the uh, the actual root. Wow, oh man, man. Wow. I mean, they're massive. Damn, I'm moving it, aren't I? Hey Brett, were those were those what kind of agaves were those? Were those espadín? I think they are espadín. Yeah. How much mezcal is one of those little roots? or big roots, I should say, make? Well, that's a really good question. Uh, uh, I, I will find out, I don't know. I'm gonna, it, text, I'm gonna text Javier right now because I know he'll answer me. <laughs> there's a, and there's a lot of different ones. Like you can imagine there's one called a tepestate that is like five of those in one. So there's okay. huge agaves. So that's the guys putting it in the pit. Pretty incredible. It's, and the smell is, God, I mean, I would, when we had, he has like this massive fermentation thing and, and it's going, it's all, at that point, it's all fiber and juice and you kind of mixing it up and the smell like is kind of vinegary. It's kind of stanky. It's really, really, I mean, if you, you know, I think the more you can appreciate like fermentation and, and, and liquor making, I mean, it really very, very special. I, 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 I still remember that smell like so vividly. We, we Very all need to keep down to Oaxaca now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and actually, and then after it goes that it goes into the distillation process, and we were drinking the mezcal warm out of the distiller, which is amazing. Like it's, and I think it was probably about over fifty percent alcohol at that point, fifty percent proof. Hey, can you guys get the door? Sounds glorious. Yeah. All right, guys. So let's start the margarita process. First thing you want to do is you want to get your chamoy and your glass and kind of nudge it 
and dredge the chamoy all over the glass. So it should look like this. What happened to the that's, that's the chamoy, not the pez, right? That's the chamoy, yes. Yeah. So the chamoy works as kind of like the adhesive. Oh. Is there such thing as too much chamoy? There nope. is not such thing as too much chamoy. You could go wild. Honestly, yeah. I love the way it's like rolling down the glass. And then it goes into the salt. And then once once you do that, yep, you dip it into the salt. And you can see the nice even coating. So Chris, everyone's got the, the mix already done, right? Yes. So I think a, a common question I always get is like, hey, look, like if I'm gonna make uh, margaritas from scratch, like, you know, these are Meyer lemons. Can I use Meyer lemons? Can I use any, can I use any like lime or lemon or like what's, you know, what's kind of the rule there? As a, as, as a adhesive, like on the rim no, of the glass I'm or sorry, as, like, for like, if they're going to make the, the, the recipe from scratch, I know what, what they, what you guys have got right now, it's got everything ready to go. It's got the agave nectar. It's got the, the lime juice in there, but if we're going to make it from scratch, which is very, very easy. You're, yeah, they're, it's very easy. And, and your traditional margaritas are going to go with an ounce of just straight lime juice. But, you know, there's a lot of people who love the sweetness to lemons. So for me personally, I like to do equal parts lemon and lime so that you get a half ounce of lemon and a half ounce of lime juice. And then that's kind of like your base. Right. But, um, you know, your traditional margaritas are, are just lime. But again, okay. you can kind of play around with it and, and you can see the differences in flavor. You know, it's going to get a little more sweeter opposed to the, the more citric bitter, bitterness yeah. of the lime. So Dan, the, the, the Meyer, oh, go ahead. Dan likes to use half an orange in his. I love it. <laughs> yes. I, I love, yes, I you love him. Orange, juice, orange juice and mezcal is, is a great margarita. I do orange, lime, um, a little bit of agave nectar, mezcal, shake it up really hard, pour, and you got yourself a great margarita. Mm. Mm. Ooh, that sounds you good. Can, you you can throw some what's soda in, water. What's in these margaritas right now? So in those margaritas, you're going to have agave nectar, lemon, lime, and tequila. So that's kind of like our, our, our mix on the, on, the, on the sour. You got like the agave nectar. You guys, this is, yeah, obviously I shop at Costco. All right, so here, here's the next step. So you can see Brett crafting his margarita right now. He's going to use an ounce to three quarters of an ounce of the agave nectar. He's going to use an ounce of the lime juice or the lemon and lime mix, put that into a shaker with two ounces of tequila. I put, I put three ounces just because it's already 7.30, dude. Yeah, and then <laughs> okay, yeah. all of your guys' has three ounces of tequila in it as well. Woo! So pour it into your shaker, get the ice in there. <laughs> and now this part's important. Want to give it a nice hard shake because the harder you shake it, the more you activate the citrus. And a good margarita, you have to activate the citrus, so you got to give it a nice hard shake. Mine seems to have already been shaken by somebody. <laughs> Be careful, you don't. Do, that, don't, that don't uh, I don't know your 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 name says Fadisha, but I'm sure it's not your name. Ooh, Fadisha. Don't put, your, don't put your hand over it. You can see I gave it a nice hard shake. You can see the nice frothiness in there. Oh, man. And then right here, you could garnish it with the lime. You can garnish it with an orange. The tamarindo stick is also really fun garnish. I have a bunch of those. How do you feel about throwing in the floater of Grand Marnier? Oh, good we're... idea. You know what's also good is a little... Um, again, I shop at Costco. Yeah. yeah. Um, a little shot of like sparkling water uh, is amazing because it kind of gives a little effervescence to it. I do that all the time. 
Or here's a here's a little trick for all you guys out there that want something different. So this is called Montenegro, and it pairs very well with mezcal. So if you're looking for something different, you can float the top of your margarita with this, and then see the differences in this compared to the uh, the Grand Marnier. But I love Montenegro when I'm pairing it with mezcal. So if you have some mezcal and some Montenegro, I definitely recommend using that. Hey Chris, what does Montenegro uh, taste like? Um, you know, Montenegro has a nice kind of bitter uh, cinnamon, hints of chocolate. Um, it's it's very kind of mellow. Uh, it's not too strong. I would liken it kind of like a cinnamon kind of chocolate. Okay, bitter. What kind of bitter? There's a lot, there's a lot of bot botanicals going on in there. So if yeah. you kind of tasted it and closed your eyes, you might taste some of the juniper. What I, I imagine there's some juniper and some different um, botanicals in there, but it's, it's it a very botanically fused spirit that kind of has like strong hints of chocolate is everyone drinking already did we did we already cheers oh uh, yeah let's cheers cheers. cheers 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 i like the i like the mason jar cheers um yum how that's come out. Best ready made margarita bottle I've, I've tasted. Well done. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Thank you guys. Thank you. I mean, it's all about simple ingredients, really. It doesn't yeah. take it doesn't take much. Just don't just don't put bad things in there and it'll taste good. Yes. <laughs> that's usually how it works. <laughs> and then you could do this, you can make this into a paloma very easily by substituting the lime juice or some grapefruit juice and then topping it off with soda water. It's that easy. Palomas are like hangovers from college. <coughs> I Not if you make them Palomas right. in make college. Them. Fantastic. I feel like grapefruit juice was the chaser to everything and Palomas essentially is grapefruit juice and tequila. I thought it was, <laughs> I thought it was Tampico, but whatever. <laughs> but we, were, we were never classy enough to combine them. Right. Exactly. Sounds like a hangover. Yeah, it does. Yeah. <laughs> I, think the, I think the first poem I had was uh, with Mountain Dew, which is really, really bad. Interesting. If that's even considered a poem. I don't know. Yeah, if you, if you guys are ever down in Jalisco, get one of the cantaritos and they basically stick like a whole jug of squirt with like a whole bottle of tequila and put it in a cup for you. And they're like, here's your paloma. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally college then. Yeah. <laughs> they'll, they'll call you something else after that, actually. Yeah, you gotta be <laughs> I won't tell you, though. So is this everyone's first margarita today, or? Unfortunately, yeah. yes. <laughs> Connor's on number two. Get it, buddy. Yeah, I was about to say, but not the last. Right, exactly. <laughs> Jamie, Jamie made homemade enchiladas for us, so I had a I had a margarita earlier. Taco Tuesday. Nice. What kind of enchiladas? Just like she's been having like these crazy cravings for cheese enchiladas for like two weeks. So she just she just decided to go for it and make them. Mm -hmm. green, green or red? Acid. Red. Red. They're very tasty. Sounds good. You know, I'm gonna I'm probably gonna order some tacos once we're done with this now to, just to oh, bring in tacos. Pop it off. Right. Yep, I'm doing Rubio's later tonight. <laughs> Rubio's. Well, no, no, it is Taco Tuesday. One more taste from college. It is. <laughs> now you're bringing back memories. <laughs> Do all y'all work together? Of sorts. No. 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 Uh, yeah, no. Do in a weird way. The ideal scenario, Brett, is that everyone can take this as a sample experience back to their own individual companies. So next time they're looking for their teams to have a fun, engaging virtual experience, they know where to go. Yeah, awesome. That's cool. I think uh, I'm probably the most or the biggest culprit. So I've done a lot of things with ED already. The challenges that we find that we come across is the shipping out of state. Do you guys have any issues with that? Uh, we just pay the, the the border a lot of money, you know. <laughs> <laughs> As long as you can make it work, that's all I care about. No, it hasn't been an issue. Okay. There's no. like people in New York and people in Seattle, there wouldn't be an issue to have everyone get their 
supplies at the same time? Yeah. Yeah, we recently did a, a, a large, uh, you know, delivery of, of that sorts for a, a, a firm downtown. So, and it was pretty much all over the country. So. Oh, nice. You just, other, go, you just gotta go through the right channels when you're going to UPS and, you know, just make sure that, you know, you kind of plan ahead. Okay. And do you guys do any kind of food as well? Like if we did, if we did a pairing of like drinks with food, is that possible if we did again, yeah. a state just, just curious. Although I think that, um, sorry, I think that Utah has a special law. I don't know if this, uh, Utah might be a little bit uh, challenging to ship alcohol to. That's okay. the one state. But yeah, um, absolutely. I Brett, mean, we Brett, can... Brett, don't you mean to ship agua frescas? <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, the x ray can't tell. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Can't tell. yeah we, we'll, we'll do like we, we did a, you know, guacamole thing for Cinco de Mayo with a, a firm. Um, with, uh, we did a thing for Hewlett Packard where they did a whole big, like, uh, they were introducing a new printer and literally Chris and I were like on to like, I don't know, thousands of people in Asia. And then we did another one, like thousands of people in South America. He was doing a cocktail. I was doing um, like a ceviche dish, you know, um, on the patio at the restaurant. So we had the whole background of the patio. It was really nice. Um, you know, I think it's just, I think, trying to stay with simpler dishes. Um, I recently did like a crispy chicken dish with like a pomegranate chimichurri for the San Gabriel school system, mm -hmm. like cook, cooking with mom and dad, like the kids and the parents. So that was kind of fun. I was with, cooking with my son. So yeah, we do, you know, pretty much anything. I mean, as long as, you know, I think it's, you gotta, I guess, think about who's your clientele and, you know, you don't want to lose them on something too difficult, but yeah, and I think we, we tried something before. I'm thinking in like, this is almost six months ago now where we just had a hard time following along with making the drinks and food at the same time. It's, Plus they're, they're all out of state. So there's, there was three people in California and then everyone else is in Seattle or New York. So it got a little complicated. Okay. <laughs> that's why I'm just like, that's what I'm thinking in my head right now. Yeah, we had a, we had a client asking, you know, can we do a butch, can we butcher a whole chicken, you know, and show everyone how to do that on, on camera, really? <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was tough i had like because some of the people on the call they have my numbers they're texting me like hey dude like I'm, I'm at the i'm at the thigh right now where do i go i'm like i i just you just gotta just follow the, just the anatomy of the bird just go with it you know get your boning knife and a smaller turkey <laughs> exactly <laughs> thanks ryan so but that's cool i mean it's i think this is like there's a lot of you know, I, it, and it was cool because we did like that one, that call with Hewlett Packard, they had like a DJ or actually they had like an MC kind of controlling the entire event. I mean, they really went out and they had like, they had like a dancer segment and they had a DJ in the background. Then they did like, a, uh, you know, us and then they had a magician. So it was pretty cool how they had, you know, it's just bizarre how we're doing this stuff now. Huh? It's yeah. just, are you guys, so COVID's forced you guys to do like group stuff like this. Are you guys trying to bring any of this back to like the restaurant when you guys open again? Or are you guys just going to go strip traditional, like have your tables? Like, are you guys thinking of different ways to try to make money back or? Yeah, I mean, I think it, you know, we've, we've put so much infrastructure into this. I mean, we've created all these menus and, and packages and baskets and this and that. I mean, for sure. I think that, you know, people really seem to dig it. I think, you know, obviously people... A lot of people really like working from home, really like the, you know, this whole situation. Um, but, and I think that there will be some, some like sort of, of, you know, virtual, you know, mixology cooking going forward, maybe not as vibrant, but um, I've always loved doing classes. Like I was uh, working with a big group before uh, the patina group. I don't know if you guys know who they are. And, and I would do like kids cooking classes with kids and, you know, we would do, uh, you know, Italian day, we do like gnocchi and, you know, olive and, and arrabbiata sauce and all kinds of cool stuff. So it's, it's fun. I think people really dig work, you know, I mean, I'm a chef. I don't know if I, if I mentioned that and uh, of, of our restaurant. So I really like uh, teaching and for me, it's just a fun thing to do. And it's fun to find a, the right, the right dish, whether it's like, cause you know, gnocchis, for example, you get to roll the gnocchis with your hands and kind of feel it and just, it's nice to actually get everybody involved, but to answer your question, I think we'll probably keep doing this. Yeah. And then would you guys maybe like go to look like corporate offices instead of having like, obviously the idea is from now between now and you guys go back to have like virtual events, but like would the idea to maybe be like, take these types of events and maybe do them in house at offices. Yeah, for sure. 
uh, uh, let's just say like, for example, uh, next to us, uh, Oak Tree Capital is a big client of ours. Or, yep. um, one of our uh, very big like catering clients and we would go there and, you know, so like the, the a classic cooking margarita you guys have, we have like guava, strawberry, tamarind, spicy cucumber. I mean, we have like 12 different flavors. So like to have all those, Taylor, do you have by chance like a picture you could just like throw on the screen real quick or like on your phone? Um, you know, we have so many different flavors. And to, so when you have those at a bar at, at a, this kind of function, say at a, at a corporate event or say, you know, at a, a you know, a creative space, like we work, whatever, are they even around anymore? I don't know. Um, but <laughs> like, it creates a really fun atmosphere. Yeah, definitely. We are, our company just moved offices to, to downtown. We're like oh. a couple minutes down the street from you. So it will be cool. Well, so thanks, you can see all the, well, thanks, Chris. You can see all the different flavors we have. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. And it and, and it doesn't have to be margaritas, like like Brett was saying, getting descriptive with like how to cut a chicken or whatever. You know, you can do the same thing with a bar. Uh you could do really fun difficult drinks like a Ramon Gin Fizz, you know, you could do um teach people how to do sours. And these aren't like very difficult drinks, but they're technical and some people just don't know how to do it. So yeah. you can do different cocktails. There's so many fun things to do. You know, just send the entire kit, like every ingredient that you would need. And then, you know, tonight we're making a porcelain or whatever the cocktail would be. Yeah. Yeah, I think like, you know, it, it's, you know, this is a really cool, I, I think that like, you know, what I can see happening is because this has become so popular. Like if you look at like experiences now, like a, you go to Airbnb, you know, oh wait, is it Airbnb? Like Air Airbnb has this thing called experiences, right? Where, where they kind of like curate, like if you're going to Dallas, for example, like what to do in Dallas. Um, and I, and I'm pretty sure, I think it was Airbnb. They actually have virtual experiences now and like a whole like platform of them. So I think like, this is really going to be like, I, you know, actually Shane, when you say that, I'm thinking like, okay, you know, people oh, pre COVID people really love doing like having us interactive stations. Right. So it's like, Here's a, a, a huge mocha hete, which is a big old mortar and pestle made out of volcanic rock and making guacamole in front of everybody and having the salsas there. But even taking it to the next level where you're like actually maybe involving people more, or I don't know if they really want to. It depends on how much the client wants to be involved, but kind of really bringing more of the, you know, kind of do, DIY, DIY there or more of a, you know, kind of interactive, you know, with the, with the clients at their office or at, whatever facility or whatever venue they're at. So I think it's totally going to evolve. Okay. Yeah. Okay, margarita. My lovely wife just walked in. I'm offering her a margarita. <laughs> you like one? Tell Lucy to take Hi, it. Oh, it's delicious. <laughs> How you guys doing? Everyone good? Anybody gone? Any, anybody actually polished the bottle yet, or close to it? Close, close to, close it. to it. On the second half. I'm almost there. <laughs> I make this one a double. I'm savoring it. <laughs> so this is a question for I guess you know both Mo and the Pez and the Pez Cantina people. Um, how how much lead time do you need to set up one of these events if we wanted to you know get one going for our corporate team? Um, beep there. You want to answer that? Yeah, I'll, we can do it tomorrow. I mean, are you ready or? <laughs> <laughs> no, you really. I mean, it, it depends on you know the, the most lead time, more lead time, better. But like you know, really, I mean, we've been talking about this. What Nick for? I don't know, a couple of weeks. Yeah, it's it's also. I mean, depending on deliveries as well. If everyone's in LA, I'm assuming it's it's a pretty quick. We we had them all delivered yesterday, right? <laughs> Um, if it's internet or not international, international might be a different story. Um, but if, if it's nationwide, um, typically for our other vendors, we do around two weeks is the minimum time. Even if it's faster to ship, it's just easier because especially with higher head counts, people have different addresses. They, they change the last second people drop out. Um, so that's usually the, the right amount of lead time. But again, I'm pretty sure, uh, Brett is competent too. We can make any scenario work in the right circumstances. Oh, cool. Yeah, just so we recently did, uh, you know, similar to this, uh, we did it for like 40 baskets. 
40 box boxes and it was all over the place. So New York, SF, and we actually, Hawaii, <laughs> that's right. Oh. And um, we shipped them out on Wednesday for, mm -hmm. for a Saturday event or Tuesday, Wednesday for a Friday event. So, you know, we can basically, the more time, the better, because we can get ready and kind of really fine tune it. But, you know, like when we send out and it can, and like what you guys got, uh, you know, we sometimes will do like a, a trio of these little uh, Cordelejo tequila bottles with it, or we'll do, you know, a tr we'll do all three flavors of Pez powder, or we'll do chips and salsa as well. So there's kind of like different levels we can do. We can really do a whole like package of it, or we can do something simple like you guys got here today, which is, you know, just kind of straightforward margaritas. So um, I think it's a, like, we can kind of like make the menu a la carte based on the client's budget. And, um, you know, we're pretty flexible. So, I mean, don't, don't like, uh, you know, I know everybody's got their a budget in mind. And um, so, you know, I think we should just, um, you know, ask us if you guys, you know, have something in mind or a certain theme. I mean, for example, Cinco de Mayo is coming up or say it was closer to like Halloween and we wanted to do something with like, um, I started making um, gummy worms uh, like with, with chamoy and, and Pez powder. Oh, wow. um, okay. And, you know, we, we, we do like really cool, um, like this is really cool. I, you know, it's kind of fun. Chris likes putting that kind of stuff on his cocktails too. It's just cool. But like we, you know, things are fun. Like you know, Super Bowl or Halloween or something more holidays. Um, the sky's the limit. I mean, thing is, the thing is, like when you guys ask for a proposal or you want to put together an idea, like honestly, it starts here with me and Chris. And so we love kind of just really tailoring the event to like whatever you need. Yeah. So. I mean, our, our goal is just like really to wow the client and really to like bring it another like level up, you know, from, from what they've experienced. Has your restaurant been open um, for the last, you know, whatever, nine months? Well, we, uh, apart from kind of like a, an oh shit, what's, what's going on in the world moment in, uh, in March, uh, we, we actually were open, like we reopened in May and then we've been open since then. Um, you know, as you guys know, it's, hmm? Is there physical occupancy in the office buildings downtown? Eh, it's pretty, it's pretty slim. Um, yeah. So it's more yeah. the residential downtown? You know, there's like 50,000 residents downtown. So um, it, it's really kept things going, you know, pretty, pretty vibrant. I mean, we had some during the summertime, like June, July, August, September, you know, we were having better Saturdays than before COVID actually. Um, and I think that was a combination of like, people just really want to drink, uh, alcohol sales kind of flipped from like 40% alcohol, 60% food to kind of flipped. Mm. And then, um, you know, uh, like at lunch, for example, we have a really, you know, kind of in a, a power lunch business area. So usually we don't sell a lot of alcohol for lunch, maybe two, three, four, five cocktails or, or wine or whatever. But now it's rare to have a table that's not having a cocktail. So oh, you mean like out uh, patio dining people on the are, patio. Yeah. Okay. It's not all off premise. It's a lot of at the, on the patio. We have a big patio. We have like a, a 1200 square foot patio that we see even distance right now. We can seat about 60 to 70 people. Are you near Nick and Steph's or are you on the Deloitte side of the. Yep. We're, we're um, Nick and Steph's is our neighbor to the North. Okay. Two buildings over the Wells Fargo Tower or the KPMG yeah. Tower? The Wells so Fargo. they're in the Wells Fargo Tower. We're in the CBRE building. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. it's not KPMG anymore. Okay. Did, we, did we get any margaritas for Walter over there? <laughs> Our special <laughs> guest. Yeah. Uh, Walter. I think it's Karina we have to watch if she doesn't break his foot. Oh. <laughs> but, um, are all you guys in LA? You guys are all in LA because we, we actually delivered everybody. Everybody got the package okay. No, no, no problems. Um, I will say I did not notice the keep refrigerated thing until like pretty late. Okay. So, I will second so that. you so might want to make that like a big old sign on there because because I just like left the bag on my table. I was like, oh cool, margarita night. Um, Put something on me as well. We can have the invites, um, the email invites at least, uh, make more of an emphasis on that as well. 
No, that's a good thing. Does it go bad though? Or is it just- I'm, I'm still eating and drinking it and you know, <laughs> I'm still alive, so. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's enough tequila in there. You could probably leave it out for a couple of days, you know? Good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. gonna be okay. I yeah. think so. I'm not too worried. <laughs> this, this salsa is delicious. Awesome, good. I'm glad you like it. I'm glad you like it. It's so good. Have you guys ever done these programs where you provide the ingredients separate and then you actually do the mixing as a part of the course? Yes. Yes. We actually, uh, we just did that. We, um, it was called a Grand Manier box. Or I'm sorry, we called it actually a Cadillac box. Okay. And uh, we, we sent, so we did a Classica. We did, two, we did a Classica like you guys got. Cucumber smash, but, and then actually two classicas and a cucumber smash, but none of, none of them had alcohol. And then um, Cordalejo tequila. I don't know if you guys know that brand, like the cool, like tall, skinny, blue, red, and white bottles. Does that have the horseshoes on it? Huh? Is that the one that has like the horseshoes on the, on the bottle or whatever? No, that's Eradura, I think. Oh. Uh, yeah. Um, but they do a hundred cents a liter. There you go. Thanks, oh, Taylor. <laughs> they do a hundred cent a liter uh, bottle. So we did the, we sent the trio of those. We sent the mixes like, well, to answer your question exactly, Ryan, like we didn't have the agave uh, apart from the, the citrus. We actually made the sour mix ready to go just to add the booze. Mm. And then we had a little, um, I don't know, what is it like? Not a pint, but a little smaller than a pint of, um, of Grand Marnier. 200 milliliters. 200 milliliters, yeah. yeah which, is, which is about six ounces. Six Ooh, ounces. A pint of Grand Marnier would be, um, you know, very <laughs> sweet. <laughs> yeah, you probably, hopefully you have leftovers. <laughs> <laughs> but it went really, really well. I, I, I know I have a picture of it here. I'm going to show it to you real quick. Um, and that was fun because they really, really did mix the cocktails kind of to their liking. We gave them recipe cards you know, to kind of guide them, like, you know, two ounces, one ounce, whatever. But, um, you know, there was a lot of uh, liberty to kind of, I guess, you know, you know, kind of make them as you'd like. Yeah. But we could, we could very easily, like, send out just the lime juice to just the agave nectar, you know, different flavored mixes, the alcohol, so that you really have to craft the margarita yourself, which, which is very easy to do. Yeah, so you see that, so that's what we sent out. Grand Marnier, um, the, the two Classicas, so one for just Classica, one for the Cucumber Smash. Mm -hmm. the, the trio of the, of the um, Cordalejo, we have the Chipotle Salsa, chips. Um, we also add, include like a tamarind candy stick, some fruit for garnish, and then the trio of Pez powders. So that's kind of like a, the whole shebang right there, you know? And one thing that I didn't notice on the packaging was like a place for where to purchase. I imagine that you sell these SKUs online. Um, if I wanted to buy one, you know, maybe make it, you know, like brutally obvious where to, you know, go pick it up. Thanks, guys. Thanks, no, I was going to say it's on the recipe card, but I yeah. guess I could make that. Yeah, or even just the word purchase or yeah, purchase. did you like, because scan me, I, even though I'm yeah. a money, I don't really use QR codes. Got it. <laughs> That's a good point. Still yeah. like my old parents. We're we're elder millennials, so we're not like all, <laughs> all totally yet. So. True. No. So we don't we don't we don't have uh, actually tangible menus at the restaurant anymore. I mean we do, but like right. So you'll ask like this like sixty year old guy like, hey, like do you know how to use a QR code? And you're like, wait, what the the, <laughs> the coding? What do you what do you? I don't like use computers. I'm like, no, just take your, you know your camera. It's it gets kind of. Half, half the time, half the time, you, half the time you walk up to them and they're just taking pictures of the QR code. You have to kind of help them. Like, here. Yeah. <laughs> but um, no, thanks for that suggestion. That's that's a good point. For what it's worth, too, Brett. Usually, once we we get the the bookings going, um, we have like an automated survey that goes out the day after that we can include any materials or links for the people who are incapable of taking yeah. pictures of a. Uh -huh. Hey, we're a live survey. We're not automated. 
Yeah, the QR <laughs> code that we have on there now, uh, Taylor, that one takes them to the Pez Craft, to the Pez Powder website and the, and the holiday boxes, uh, the gift boxes. Yeah. yeah, it takes you to, right to the holiday boxes with the Pez Craft. Yeah, so we have like a gift box um, uh, link on there and uh, that's it's on our Pez Powder website. And then if you, you know, if you guys are out and about and you want to buy more Pez Powder, you can buy it at Amazon. We also have it at Bristol Farm, Super King. We're really trying to push it to the retail right now. So hopefully coming to a market near you. But uh, that's a great suggestion. Hi there. We have a newcomer. <clears throat> so um, when, we, when we get back open, you guys, I mean, we're open now on the patio. Oh, we got, so, all right, we got a newcomer here. <laughs> hey. Hey. Her first margarita is. today. A thirsty Hi. newcomer. Nice. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Welcome to the group. Mmm, that's delicious. It's yeah, not my margarita. There's, there's the <laughs> testimonial for you. Mm. Yeah. Do you need to re-rim that, Ryan, or are we good? Uh, I, I believe mm -hmm. I do. Uh, yeah. I'm definitely <laughs> lagging over here. Oh, no. Oh, good. I'll pour it back in the shaker. If I was there, I would do it for you, bud, but I, you know. Oh. How you doing, Em? Hi guys, I just got back from giving some blood. So oh, nice. this perfect time, time for murder. <laughs> <laughs> that'll, that'll get the head rush going quick. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe single shot for me tonight. <laughs> yeah, so we're just talking about mezcal and tequila and the fun differences and the fun similarities and uh that tequila can be a mezcal and mezcal can be, it's, did I get that right? I would get that wrong. I don't, I don't even like, I just, I don't know. All I know is that mezcal, I can drink so much of this and I, and I never get, it never takes me over the top. I don't know what it is. It's just a very happy. It's a very happy spirit. The, the Oaxacans have something right. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I, I noticed that I very rarely get hangovers the next day drinking it. Just straight mezcal. If you could say that again exactly the way you said it, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> so the, when we were in Oaxaca, the guy who owns this, he would. We were staying at this, uh, uh, you know, Los Javis. We were staying at this uh, old like uh, cow. What is that? Like a uh, limestone factory, and this dude would pick us up every morning in his suburban with like a 12 pack of Tecates and multiple bottles of this bl blaring like uh, the doors or Bob Marley. And um, I don't know how, but we would polish like two or three bottles of this, like amongst like eight of us in a whole day. And it was never, we were never like sloppy drunk or over the top. It was just something, uh, maybe it was the, also the Oaxacan energy just being down there, you know, it was pretty special. It's the air, it's the air in Mexico, Brett. Yeah, plus the 6,000 feet plus elevation, I guess, right? <laughs> <laughs> so are we getting invites next time you go down there? Let's, hey, uh, Nick, we gotta talk about that, man. Let's say that's the next EV experience. Once right. uh, international travel is approved. From I, will, I, will be, I will happily be your tour guides, you guys. That sounds it's great. Fun. It's fun. Has anyone ever been down there before? No, it's, it's that a, area, just the coastal tourist areas. Uh, okay. It's cool because you've got like the city of Oaxaca, which is very um, indigenous kind of feeling. Like, I feel like it's not really tainted too much by, you know, international uh, cuisine. And the, fo the food's very different than Mexican cuisine. Um, it's just it's an amazing place. And then you go down to the coast, which is like Puerto Escondido, all the, like, the cool surf towns. And you've got like all these like Mexican surfer dudes, full on different laid back, you know, vibe with, you know, we were, you know, eating lots of whole fish on the beach and ceviche and more mezcal and Mexican beer. And it's pretty, pretty nice life. 
pre pretty good way of living, I'd say these guys got. Sounds Take nice. me to the beach. Pour me a drink. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm booking my flight right now, Brad. Uh, I'm gonna be gone for the next few days. <laughs> <laughs> Only two days. <laughs> Just, just to drink some mezcal and come back. Mm. Looks like some everyone's got a on a good vibe, good level right now, you guys. Definitely. This uh, Chinoy reminds me of I actually lived in Mexico City for a little over a month, and I probably got this all over my apartment multiple times. Nice. Going to Estado Azteca and a lot of the events down there. Oh, that's cool. You know, I've never been down to Mexico City. I unbelievably, we, I'm. Sh it's it's amazing, right? It's I. It's probably I traveled for a bit, and it was the most livable, fun city that probably out of any of the other cities I lived in. Yeah. Wow, it sounds like a very very fun, festive, nonstop kind of place. It. it a lot of good food. Mm -hmm. Excellent food. Yeah. I mean, uh, we, we go down, we uh, kind of the inspiration behind Pez Cantina was all our fishing trips to Loreto, which is a little, a little uh, fishing town um, about two hours, about five hours north of Cabo, but in the Sea of Cortez side. So the water's warm and calm there, right? We go down and we catch these like, you know, mahi mahis that are like, 35 pounds and it's really it's a really cool place very very chill like fishing town and um you know we go down there like once a year and people are always like oh my gosh are you do you feel safe it's like i feel safer there than than here maybe i mean it's like it's just just something so magical about it and you know i don't know something about being able to to catch a fish and bring it on the boat and and literally chop it up make ceviche and and get a little bit of salt water in there and have tostadas on the boat with a cold corona man it's like life doesn't get much better than that pretty good vibe did you catch any rooster fish down there uh no those epic ones with like the massive spines on the back they're really popular in the sea of cortez i figured oh out. are they really i know i've heard of them before but i don't i don't think i've caught one before You'll know um, when you catch one. It, yeah. Is it like a shallow water fish? They are more shallow, yes. Yeah. So you have to be inside of a mile from shore normally. Okay. Yeah, we've caught like a lot of like trigger fish, um, like closer to the shore trigger fish. Um, um, you know, when we, when, we, when we first leave, we, we throw the nets, we get like a mackerel or they call them a banana fish. I don't know. They look like mackerels. And then we bring them on, you know, put them in a live uh, bay tank. And we usually catch uh, yellowtail, not yellowtail, sorry, mahi-mahi, because they're the most plentiful down there. You know, they're kind of just like, you and know. they're beautiful as soon as you hook them. And then you got about 30 seconds and then they're puke green in the boat. Yep, exactly. Oh, man. I don't, yeah. That's, you. obviously, you've done some fishing down there. A few times. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> A it's a big old fish nerd. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. So am I, Ryan. Like one, two. <laughs> well, you know what? At least you're bringing home the, the, the fish. I'm sure she's happy with that. Great cook. Emily. And she's an even better eater. <laughs> yeah, that's fun. I mean, it's nothing. It's, it's great to be able to do that, catch it and like bring it home fresh and be able to like saute it or make ceviche or grill it and um you know we've had many many a good times down there um you know also scallop diving chris and i did some scallop diving last time we were down there which was like cool. you think like oh this is gonna be easy oh my gosh like that's just uh it's you know when you're when you're snorkeling you're looking down 18 feet and you're like have a bony knife in your hand you're like okay i got this and everything looks the same down there and by the time you get down there you already lose your breath and got to come back up and you catch like one scallop in like three hours and then and then and the dude who takes you out there has like three pounds in his pocket laughing at you oh my you're like oh, i feel so insignificant <laughs> i caught one scallop in three hours oh man so that, that's not gonna feed anyone <laughs> <laughs> were they delicious they were amazing they were, they were amazing brett brett made that that fantastic mixto ceviche with like all the fish and everything we caught and and it wasn't just scallops like 
he he would he he just knew he had an eye he knew what to look for so he would bring out these like really weird they look like a prehistoric bird beaks oh. yeah you have a yeah, he, he just crack them yeah you you have a lot of crazy, interesting cool stuff we'd pull out of the yeah the sea of cortez is full of it's it's really a uh, so rich with like shellfish and i mean we we literally chris is talking about this like we found this like uh it's it must have been some kind of scallop but literally the thing looked like uh i mean it was like this long and like kind of like a like a beak like you said and the meat was like maybe the size of like a massive jumbo scallop you get at a restaurant oh, that was it the rest of it was just like intestines and all kinds of weird stuff right <laughs> uh but yeah but so we sliced it up and we threw it in there with the trigger fish and oh, it was just amazing. Just so amazing. Taylor, why are you making that face? I'm Taylor? hungry. <laughs> Am I grossing you out? No, you're good. I'm are just you? interested. I'm trying to picture it. I don't are you know learning, what my are face you is things like? about us that you never knew. Uh oh, <laughs> Taylor's not going to come to work tomorrow. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was a really fun experience. It, it it was it was really fun. I have a a lot more. Um, gratitude for the guys that go down there and bring me my scallops definitely it, it would be fun to do this nick like take everybody out to like i mean mexico would be cool but like san pedro or jump on like a day boat that's you know? the dream i don't it's know if kevin uh kevin told you before but we we launched as an in-person events company so we were okay. we're hoping to we had we had boats we had restaurants and patios like yourself um and i think at the end of the day we're still there's, there's nothing that replaces that in-person experience. So I think we'll be hybrid for the foreseeable future, um, doing both remote, virtual, and in-person. But once the, the, the world is ready for us, um, that yeah. sounds exactly what I want to be doing right now. Dude, please let me, let, let, let us be some kind of part of that. I'd be great. <clears throat> I'll bring the, uh, I'll bring the booze. Love it. For sure. That's and that's usually a fair deal knife. in any any trade. Oh, uh, really? Any really? Business. Count on me for that. And your knife, Brett, because you're gonna cut all the fish up and cook it for us. No, you got those guys who are on the back of the boat. They do that for you. Yeah, the deckhands are always cleaning the fish for oh, us. Right. Really nice. You spoiled out there on the charter boats. Exactly. I just love I love coming back and watching them, and they throw all the guts in the air, and the, the birds come, and they're like birds. having a field day, right? Or sharks too. Or sharks. <laughs> Yeah. yeah that sounds really fun <laughs> i'm there some people are like that does not sound very fun no I, th I think i'm half hungry and half depressed that i haven't left my apartment in a year <laughs> <laughs> yeah i know it's tough well have you have you been cooking at home at all you, be, you become a better cook that's it's debatable. We did a, a baking course the other week and it didn't turn out too well. Oh, really? Say that much. <laughs> Momo's really, some of the guests loved it, so good for them, I suppose. But mine, I'm gonna blame my oven. My oven, and I didn't have the right ingredients, so I had to improvise a little bit. <laughs> the coconut flour is not the same. They're a little no. bit different. Exact proportions, Mo. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Baking is a, is a science. It's not an art. Yeah. Like you have you have to be perfect. <laughs> Or I, I found out the hard way. Amen. That's that's right, Connor. <laughs> you don't blame the people who taught you how to bake when you didn't do it right. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. Bl I said I blame the oven. That my oven's an old guys, oven. You have more lead lead hot enough. Pouring cocktails. His oven runs too hot, guys. His oven runs too hot. <laughs> I have that. I have that same problem though. So you know, the other day, Brett. You understand? This Brett gave me this really beautiful croissant. And, you know, I, I, I felt really embarrassed when he sent me a picture of it. And it was gorgeous, orange. It was about this big. It was beautiful. And, you know, I didn't want to send him a picture of mine because I definitely burnt the outside of the croissant. And when I cut it open, it still, it just, it literally just deflated. Well, like, <laughs> so I, I had the same oven problems that you have, brother. I'm going to brag, dude. <gasps> wow. Look at how beautiful that is. Yeah, I came out, it came out pretty crispy and fluffy. We had the same we had the same dough and mine looked nothing like that. It's my oven. Was it looking frumpy? It was looking frumpy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
the, the, the trick on those guys is, is popping them in the oven, like kind of at a hot temperature so that they kind of develop the outside crust. Otherwise they just want to like, Ooh, yes. They want to fall. That, that laminated dough. Well, if you guys want to try some uh, amazing naturally leavened bread, this is my plug for one of my great friends, his company, Tommy and Atticus. Uh, they're also based in Los Angeles. Give them a shot. I just posted their link in the chat. I just saw that. Okay. That, that's uh, I, I can attest to it. We've we've been ordering it relatively regularly. Yeah, Delicious. we just had them too. That garlic bread is amazing. Oh, yeah, the garlic is tied with the jalapeno cheddar for my fave. They're they're so good. I would. Sh and the coolest thing about it is that even people with like sensitivities to gluten, because it's naturally leavened. I mean, he he you know created these starters in our kitchen a couple of years ago or three years ago. Um, you don't get bloated. You don't have any stomach side effects. It goes through you like lettuce. So it's pretty epic. <laughs> Almost like that. Infused with cannabis. Yes. Highly recommend that. it. <laughs> I recommend that with all consumption, but that's okay. Fair. Fair. Wait, did you say it goes through you like cannabis? I said lettuce, but ah. Taylor said cannabis. The devil's lettuce. I didn't the correct devil's lettuce. <laughs> The devil's lettuce. The devil's lettuce. The devil's lettuce. That's the funny. Devil's lettuce. <laughs> That could actually be make for a really fun um, Zoom meeting. Maybe we do like an edible thing. Well, you call me for that. <laughs> we, we, we've had a few requests, and I think we were talking about I can about provide this. the edibles. Well, there you go. <laughs> Taylor, I can lead the class. Personal splits. Personal splits. Personal splits. Body can do a rolling class. Honestly, that's a great <laughs> idea. That's a really good idea. We've had a lot of corporate requests just for that. Have you really? <laughs> no, no, not, not, not for <laughs> But but I'm for some some CBD surprised. products, yes. I wouldn't be surprised, actually. You know, you never know. Well, we, we've been we've been um, tinkering with ice cream, which is uh, it's very very nice and fun and delicious, easy to make. Um. We're actually, Chris and I are working on uh, doing a CBD version of our Pez powder. Cool. Nice. Yeah. With isolate powder or with, you know, like distillate from CBD? Uh, isolate powder, I, I, I think, think is the way to go. And as a matter of fact, we're just doing the research right now. So if you, do you know anyone who has like good isolate powder? Like, do we? Isolate powder, I mean, it's all hemp derived. Just go on Amazon. Really, there's so many vendors for it. There's yeah. not really one better than the other. Just to get a good, you know, get a good price on it and make sure the potency is high enough. Right. Okay. Is it is it pure? Are there any fillers inside? Some can be. It just depends. You have to look up and ask the manufacturer. Yeah. Cool. Thank you for it has, that. It has cornstarch. Some can. <laughs> oh, really? You can buy it more expensive. Sure. Ninety nine point something. Yeah. Hmm. All right, thanks I for that. I definitely want that 99% isolate. Yeah. We just don't know, like, uh, not, I don't want to get off too much in this conversation right now, but like, you know, like what, what like uh, uh, dispensaries, like they I know they have very strict, um, you know, regulations on, on where your sources are. So that is true. <clears throat> yeah. So we don't want to, we want to make sure we do it right. For the dispensaries in California, it needs to be uh, derived from the cannabis plant with, with, with THC. It can be CBD only, but it has to be derived from THC-based cannabis. Um, but if it's not sold at a California licensed dispensary, you can just have isolate powder. And you can sell that which is internationally. Derived. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Nick can connect us post It's cheaper that. too, so go that route 100%. Everyone's yeah, learning in this. If in you this need CD. anybody to do some legal research, I, I have free access to Lexus and Westlaw until the, <laughs> like until May, I think. So, you know, who does the one with CBD margarita? Michi Lala, you know? Exactly, I do. I'd sign right up. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, there's a wine band, a wine brand called Ricketts Wine. What's the other brand he has? Either way, there there is a hemp wine brand out there in California right now. Um, and you can go try it out. They have sangria and they have, you know, some carbonated concepts. 
It's interesting. Really? And, they're, uh, and they're legal. They're they're legal. They have hemp mixed with alcohol. Uh, there's no alcohol. He has uh, he has removed. He has removed the alcohol, you know, from their products. I was going to say you could just call it crossfaded. Love it. Maybe one day. Love that graphic. Yeah. Soon. That sounds like that sounds like an interesting evening. We'll, we'll bring some of it on the boat, Brett. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Well, they, they say that a, hemp. they say that a better substitute for uh, what's it called? The stuff you take uh, when you for seasickness. Dramamine. Dramamine. Dramamine is actually cannabis. I will tell you that from firsthand experience, it's accurate. <laughs> it's a balance. It's a balancer. We used to always use Dramamine as kids when we were going out, you know, in the ocean, and you don't need that anymore. <laughs> just don't get caught by the federales if you've uh, if you're in Mexico. Yeah, or you just give yeah. it, it also, just it's give them a fish. Uh, happy. Or just have five hundred or thousand dollars cash to hand them as soon as they stop your boat. Easy. Well, you know, literally, when we would come in sometimes after a good catch, uh, we'd have to hide some of the fish because because if not, they would actually they they would take it from us. Holy shit! It's crazy. I mean, these guys like are you know, hey, you got to pay there's a, better reason, there's a reason why people are leaving Mexico to come here. It's because it's terrifying down there. <laughs> I don't know. I'm I'm thinking the opposite, man. I'm gonna go down there well, for, for, <laughs> for white passing people. It's very safe. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> this is well, this hey, is definitely yeah. Weird. Um, so my sister, she's a she's a big mezcal fan. Um, do you have any brands that you you know recommend? Because uh, I'm I want to buy some cool stuff for her birthday. Yes, I I know, I know nothing about mezcal other than what you told me. Where do you live, Ryan? I live in Manhattan Beach. Okay. I was gonna say I, I recommend you come and visit us, and I'll uh, you can buy one through me, like a good one, okay. if you want. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, like uh, I don't know. I mean, they seem. Chris is yeah. Chris has got them right there. So. But like Los Hobbies is a good brand. Um, Cinco Sentidos is probably my favorite mezcal company like right now. Mm. Cinco Sentidos. Cinco Sentidos is probably my favorite mezcal company like on the planet, just currently. Um, La Marca Negra makes really good mezcal too. La, so the thing about La Marca Negra like is if you like your mezcal yeah. more stiff, like stiff mezcal, this is your company. Because I think stiff that their meaning. lowest mezcal, like in high, high in alcohol. So it's probably, it averages like around like 47 to 48%. And then it goes higher at like 52 percent mezcal uh you know abv okay but i mean uh, you know, is, rating, is, there, a is rating? there a rating for the smokiness flavor too like how much peatiness or whatever that flavor is yeah you know la marca negra is gonna have a little bit more more earthiness too but you know a lot of people sometimes mistake um some of the earthiness for smokiness because if you see silvestre on the bottle silvestre means that the that the agave was grown naturally. It, it was it was wild grown, and so a lot of those wild grown agaves are going to be more earthy, um, be a, a tad bit more citrus forward. If you are looking for sweeter mezcals, then I would go in the Tobala range or or the the Madre Quiches. Um, a lot of the Tobalas they use a lot of the mountain fruits like plums and and such. Um, when they're making it, so it tends to. Can you really uh, spell those out in the chat, if possible? My Spanish is yeah. not fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> what you say is what you see is what you write, or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys uh, heard of or worked with uh, the uh, Creño company? I think they're out of Arizona. Creño. Creño, yeah. Creño? No. There's some pretty good, we had a class with them uh, a month ago and it was, it was pretty, pretty tasty. It's one of those, you take a sip and you drink half the bottle afterwards and don't know, notice a thing. Is this uh, one of them good? El Silencio is good, yeah. El Silencio is good. Espadin, they, they have a good, um, they have a good, uh, uh, what is it, an ensemble. 
That's that's one of the better um, missed calls that Al Silencio makes. But they're good. They have like two, three. Okay. I think the, I think the challenge, Ryan, is that like uh, it's hard to find like a really big selection of mezcal at a lot of places. I mean, what where, where would you find like I don't even know because I don't really buy too much retail, but like Chris, what, or I mean, where do you guys find like a good selection of mezcal? In, in Los Angeles, um, a very good selection of mezcal you're gonna find at Ramirez Liquor in Boyle Heights. Mm -hmm. um, in Glendale, there's a really good selection of mezcal at Remedy. Um, and then um, I would say Mission has another good selection, but Barkeeper in Silver Lake probably has one of the most well put together mezcal. It's, it's because they go out and get like the very best of the best. So if you're looking for like high end, really well put together mezcal, this Barkeeper. Otherwise, um, Ramirez, Mission, um, I wouldn't recommend Bevmo. Bevmo doesn't tend to have a good mezcal selection. <laughs> Anything out in the valley? The what? Valley. Um, I'm trying to think, because I've, I've I've been to a lot of liquor stores <laughs> these past these past few months, so. Um, isn't mission mission has a, a couple of locations in the valley right they, they do but circus there's this place called circus Lick, liquor they have a really good selection of of mezcal out in the valley i was very i was very stunned at actually their mezcal selection um that would probably be one place out in the valley when you go there tell them you know chris i will <laughs> I'm looking it up right now. Yeah, because I want to get her like a variety, something where she can see kind of the full spectrum of what Mescal has to offer and just kind of. I mean, honestly, I mean, honestly, the best thing for you to do, Ryan, really would be to come visit us at Pez. Just come hang, just like I messaged you already. Yep, I just uh, sent you an email. We'll take okay, a look. Cool. So like uh, just come and, and say what's up and hang out and then try some that we got. Like we've got this one, it's called Bozal and it's called, it's so Bozal is the name of the, uh, of the brand and then um, the varietal is called, pet, uh, sorry, borrego, like lamb. So they actually like hang it right here. Like, over the distillation process. Oh, Sam so, bought that for you. Yeah, someone bought I, that for me, but it got too hot in the back of a camper during a camping trip and the cork exploded and so we didn't get to drink it was it was it was it a was it a bulls was it a brown bottle a blue bottle or a yellow it looked bottle like, it looked that exact, that exact one bottle. with a cork top it was on our floating trip guys if you uh if you've been on that one bottles too cool okay yeah it was the brown one my car smelled very smoky <laughs> <laughs> So this brown bottle, Bozal, what they do is this brown one, it's called their Sacrificio Editions. And within it, they have the Borrego, which is the... What was that? I was making a joke. It was bad. I said it sounds morbid because it sounds like it said the Sacrifice Edition. It is. It's actually lamb blood. It's not mezcal. Yeah. So, so then they also do, they also do, uh, they also do a turkey breast. They do um, Iberico ham, and then they do um, Parma ham as well. And that's wow. like, they're different, yeah. So like their Iberico one is delicious too. So Bozal, the, these are called, these are called um, pechugas, and you drink these during the holidays. So uh, traditionally in Mexico, these are drank for um, a very special celebration or in the months of November and December to celebrate, you know, Thanksgiving, oh, Christmas and such. Great to know. Mm -hmm. And that's called so, a pechuga, you said, is great for the holiday? Yeah. Yes, it's called pechuga. And then that's 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 what you drink for the holiday. That's a very special bottle. Those are what you give as like gifts and such and special occasions. This is very helpful. Brad, I'm going to come see you because my sister's boyfriend, uh, he's Mexican and he knows a hell of a lot more than I do. And I want to make sure that he knows that I care about them. Yeah. And you need to make sure you, sh you show up a little bit because that's otherwise like... You know, yeah. You know. Well, I, I older get it. sister. I get it. Yeah. Yeah, older sister, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Some of the proof. <laughs> I should... if, if, you asked me what, if you asked me what my favorite I'm... agave was, it would be okay. That's my favorite mezcal agave. So that's my personal favorite. What's the word again? Because you cut out slightly. Um coyote. Coyote. Just spelled like the yeah. like the animal. 
Yeah. Coyote. It's the mezcal speaking right now. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> These chips are really. We got, good. We got Shane back in here with a with a a change of clothes. No, I just took out my jacket. A wardrobe change. He's got the double collar going on, or is that a two tone collar? No, this is a golf shirt, actually. Oh, okay, Shania. And Shane, your hair looks amazing for always. Thanks, babe. <laughs> That's like. <laughs> If you guys like Breaking Bad, this is Aaron Paul and Brian Cranston's company. It's pretty good, Mescal. Oh, how do you like it? It's really good. They just came out with another varietal, the Tobala, which I would highly recommend trying. But this is their company. It's called Dos Hombres. And awesome. I love Breaking Bad, so I got it out of nostalgia. The do, dos Hombres for Mezcal or Casamigos for yeah, Tequila? I was going to say, the famous people. A-list like actors this. are crushing the alcohol <laughs> sales game. They're smart. Yes. So what's the vodka that like wasn't like Jay Z and on a vodka like Ciroc or something like that? Oh, he's getting into like weed now. No, Jay Z. Jay Z on Grey Goose. Oh, Wait, nice. is, isn't this um, Puff Daddy? Right. What's That's that? Puff Daddy. That's yeah, Puff they Daddy. Own? Yeah, they own the Daddy or Diddy. That's P Diddy. P Diddy. Does D for Puff Daddy? Daddy and P Diddy are the same dude, dude. Same I know, but is the D, does it stand for Daddy or Diddy? Wait, is Notorious <laughs> B.I.G. the same thing or no? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> bad joke. That was a really bad joke. He would probably argue that he's actually, you know, different people. You know, Diddy was one, Puff Daddy was another person entirely. You know, kind of like Snoop Lion, mm -hmm. you know, versus yeah. Snoop Dogg. All right. They, they, they changed. They, they evolved. They grew. You do you, boo. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, this one is to Evie and Pez Cantina. Cheers to you, bro. Thank you, guys. Cheers, guys. I'm just rocking Kirkland. I'm, I'm drinking the same thing, Brett. I'm drinking the same thing you are. Wait, where'd you get that? Wait, I, mine's, mine's missing now. Where'd it go? You have it? Oh, yeah. I took it. I, I went into your house and I grabbed it. <laughs> Thank you, little guy. <laughs> We're having, this, yeah, okay. <laughs> Body, what are you laughing my, at? My son and wife are laughing at me. It's like, okay, we're, we're now we're having parties on on Zoom and like, <laughs> you guys, my whole life has transitioned now. It's like, kids get up. I used to get up at six thirty with them, take them to school. You guys all seem way too young for like kids, so. Um, now I get to now I get to basically wake up, make them breakfast. They don't like it. I got to make them another breakfast. Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> I'm just. They kidding. don't like the chefs cooking. That shows you how picky yeah. kids are. I mean, these guys are lucky, man. I was making like lobster mac and cheese BLTs oh and stuff like this for the lunch, and they come back like halfway eaten. I'm like, dude, or untouched. Untouched. That's too fancy. Yeah. If you ever need they, any help, we remain available. That sounds amazing. They need, <laughs> they need a bologna, bologna and Dorito sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Probably like that. <laughs> well, the good news, I bought them the Lunchables, you know, the little crustables, whatever the thing is. Oh, they, they need them. I'm like, okay, this, this, is, this is a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just picturing making my future child a a lobster grilled cheese or whatever and then they turn it down and then having them turn it down i, I will disown them <laughs> that's <laughs> like, a 14 dollar you put it in your mouth <laughs> yeah you say that you say that now connor then you're then you're gonna want something from them you'll be like okay let's negotiate here yeah i guess we'll see yeah connor you might see first what I think you'll be seeing it first, right? Or Foddy? We'll see. First. Ladies' choice, I will say. <laughs> yeah, oh, you're talking about children. Got it. I have no idea what you're There you go, guys. Yeah, there, there's another party that's in charge of these things. Your father? <laughs> yes. Oh, wow. My father is in charge of my reproduction. 
<laughs> is it is it Hank? Hank? Oh Hank's my god. Dead. Uh, you knew Pop. That was my dad. I wow. Wow. I'm okay with it. I love Hank. He was a good boy. He was a sweet boy. was great. And Mike. We have great pups. Oh, yeah. As for, for your con for extra context, that, that was their old dog. So yes, it's not a male dog. I was like, I had a whole different picture in my head, actually. And how it relates to the reproductive <laughs> system, I'm not sure, but <laughs> no, <laughs> that is that's I to mix up all the goldens. Blame it on the alcohol. <laughs> yeah, right. Dogs do prime you for kids, though. We got it. We had a dog first just to get warmed up. The responsibility. Yeah, they're all different too, so you get you get kind of a nice little flavor when you have a couple. <laughs> our, our refrigerator just exploded. What? Our refrigerator just exploded. Too much good food in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that lobster BLT really wanted to get out. Was it the pechuga? Hey, yeah, they got a pechuga coming out of the, the fridge right now. What's pechuga? Well, you know what pechuga means. It's the celebration mess gone. Oh, yeah. yes. It's, it's getting all chesty. Pechuga does mean like a breast. It does. Yeah, so I'll, I'll leave it, I'll leave it at de that. Pollo? Pechuga de pollo. Exactamente, senor. Yep. Or, or turkey. The the big old the big old turkey is the, what is it called a ba, ba, bafalote bread bafalote wahalote that big turkey that runs all throughout wahalote yeah wahalote wait ta wahalote. Taylor Taylor is taking this to a whole new level now man look at Taylor he's just like no not our Taylor sorry not you <laughs> Mr Emerson over here is like was my, my bad Mexico. guys my bad. <laughs> You guys were talking so much about Mexico, I started <laughs> thinking about Mota, and then I got distracted. Apologies. <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> you guys, I That's think I'm gonna, I'm gonna sign off, and I'm gonna have dinner with my family now. <laughs> thank you for hanging out with yeah, us. Yeah, thank you so much, Brett. I was- <laughs> Thank you, man. You know what? I was not expecting this uh, little get together but it was great and it was no it's been this has probably been the most fun group I've, I've been with you guys honestly i i feel like we should be hanging at a bar together right now like this is just the beginning of the evening you know God. sounds like it has sounds like one of us ball. has one so hey dude we're, we we're we, in luck. we gotta we we seriously gotta like do this at pez i mean seriously yeah, like, yeah. absolutely i'll host i, I'll host. I just <laughs> right <laughs> right, guys i'd be chilling outside with taylor well, Thank you. you. <laughs> nice meeting you. Yes, appreciate it. Bye. Good night. Thank you guys. Bye. 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 Bye